what's up guys thanks so much for clicking on the video my name is Leah and let's recap and review Married to Medicine y'all know how I feel this is one of my shows this is season 10 episode 1 so before we get into it I just want to say this I feel like Marriage to Medicine it's been on for 10 years should have their own day you know normally Married to Medicine comes on right after Atlanta, but I feel like Married to Medicine has a solid fan base where they could premiere on their own day. And y'all know the schedule is jam packed if you are a fellow like Bravo lover like I am. And I feel like Married to Medicine could premiere either on Monday or Thursday. Not a Friday because normally they move shows to Friday to die because they know most people are out on the weekends on a Friday. But it definitely could be on a Monday. I think the only show that premieres on Monday is Below Deck, Mediterranean. And I just feel like give Married to Medicine they own day, please. But let's get into this review. All right, y'all. So the episode opens up and we're at this boutique called The Vault. It kind of has a really cool concept where to actually enter into the actual establishment. It has a vault like it's like like you are in like a bank with like a bunch of diamonds and jewels. But um, we see um, Heavenly is first to step up on the scene. She's admiring the furs and the outfits and things of that nature. We see um, one of the stylists there. So I'm guessing The Vault is like maybe like a high-end boutique where they get like run way pieces and stuff like that because there wasn't a lot of repeat outfits they were like things that look similar to me but it looks like they were made like they were made differently we then see Jackie pull up and I actually like the orange outfit that Jackie had on it, it really was really pretty on her and so they're looking around they're like oh this is really nice we find out that it's kind of like a soft launch and then next thing you know Phaedra pull up with this ugly blonde. I hate, when I tell y'all, I hate this 613 blonde wig on Phaedra. I hate it. I hate it, I hate it, I hate it. Because there are so many other different color, color blondes that she could wear. She could wear wheat blonde. That probably would look really lovely on her. Or you have uh, like a buttery blonde, not this like Barbie platinum. It's, I don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like Phaedra and I don't like this. <laughs> but... Phaedra pulls up in that same Mugler outfit that we need to burn. I mean, burn it. Every Larsa is wearing it in her confessional. We see Wendy, um, Dr. Wendy from Potomac is going to wear it in, in later on in the season. I think we see Marlo with it on. Now we got Phaedra wearing it. It's either the girls wear it in black or blue. Either way, I'm tired of seeing it, and, and, and we got to retire it. They can't wear it no more. It's just like that Gucci dress that everybody was wearing, that pink Gucci dress. I think Lisa Renna... Erica Jane and I want to say one of the like um, Atlanta girls had it. Throw it away. I don't. I don't want to see it no more. But Phaedra pulls up. We find out that she's like a part owner of the vault, so she's welcoming the girls. You can tell that Dr. Jackie got her good eye on Phaedra, especially when she was talking in her confessional. And I guess they had asked her how she felt about Phaedra. She said, "You know, Phaedra is a smart woman." She's she's really cool, but she's slick like like oil or or like a like a spill on the highway. I don't know the reference, but either way, it let me know Jackie got her good eye on Phaedra, and she know Phaedra for her works. You got Heavenly saying that her and Phaedra kind of know each other. They've been to a lot of parties in the Atlanta scene, so she really likes Phaedra, and she's glad that she's a part of the group now. Phaedra lets us know she dating some doctor. You know, Dr. Heavenly on her channel said, I'm calling him Dr. Emoji because we don't get to see his face. They just show a picture of him and Phaedra together. And there's an emoji over his face. We find out he's like a Nigerian, like pediatric cardiologist. And so she's like, yeah, he's he's helping me. He's working on my heart. I don't know. I think Phaedra is a fraud. <laughs> I think is a fraud. So nothing she really says, I really connect with. I also feel like Phaedra, Phaedra's playing in our face. She is genuinely playing in, her fa in our faces because I know she's done several interviews where they have asked her and questioned her about this doctor. And it seems like she's moved on or it, it feels like Phaedra was only dating that man to be a part of the show and now she has another doctor. And I mean, it's semantics at this point when we do Married to Medicine. Quad's been on this show since the beginning and she has not been married to medicine ever since she got a divorce from, um, what's it called? 
from Dr. Greg. So it's like, if Kwai can be on the show, Phaedra can be on the show, but I do find it highly annoying that I feel like you lying to me. Like, it feels like you're not dating him because why wouldn't he sign the release? Like, does he not want to be attached to you? And if he doesn't want to be attached to you, why would you even prop him up to be somebody as like your boyfriend? So it's given that maybe you and him had an understanding, but then he just didn't sign the release because that's what it is. They can't legally show his face on the show because he didn't sign the release form for the producers to do so. So it feels like a scheme. It feels like a scheme, a sham, and a charade, and I don't like it. I don't. So we then flip over to a scene where we're at Simone's house. My girl, I don't care what none of y'all say, love Simone down, Dr. Simone down. So we're at Cecil and Simone's house, and, you know, she's getting things together. We find out that Toya and Eugene are coming over, and so is Dr. G and his fiance, uh, Letitia. And so Eugene and Toya get there first, and pretty much, you know, they seem to have bonded and came together a lot closer. Uh, Toya and Eugene let us know that, and I like these confessionals. I don't know. I think they taken a, a page out of the Dubai girls because I think the Dubai girls were the ones that started off with full body confessionals. I think it was them first. Yeah. And now I, I like it. I And I also like that um, the dual confessionals where we have the husbands and the wives sitting together, it feels a more open because normally they look like they was bunched into that room, which I know they weren't, but it just always looked claustrophobic to me. But we see Toya and Eugene speaking in the confessional, talking about how they had like a really rough year last year, you know, with the rumor about Toya possibly sleeping with somebody in the neighborhood, then the whole Anila getting robbed situation. And then and then you had Heavenly Quad and Funky Dineva implying that, you know, well, I really can't say Funky Dineva because he was just regurgitating what he got from Quad and Heavenly because we know he's really good friends with them. But I remember when he did his review on Married to Medicine, he was basically saying that he heard from them that it was seeming like Toya and her family allegedly set up Anila's house to get robbed. So you had that going on. You had Eugene being depressed because he wasn't really enjoying the work that he was doing at the hospital. So they had a rough year. But she, but the, uh, Eugene and um, Eugene and Toya end up saying how Cecil and Simone set them down and really like encouraged them and scolded them about not giving up on their marriage and working through their issues. And it seems like they're in, definitely in a better place. Um. I'm happy for them. We also find out that Cecil and Simone stopped writing that book because it was opening up old wounds about the whole divorce situation. Um, well, when they were going to get a divorce with a whole ex-friend, which I think is a good idea. Like, sometimes you just need to leave the past in the past. If y'all were able to work through it and still push forward and still be happy together, then there was no need to open up those wounds. But like Omarosa said, like, if you were going to write a book about a, about your relationship or be saying that you were going to give marital and dating advice, you definitely were going to have to tap into that situation. And I guess they said, not on us. Not, no, we, we not doing that because we in a good place right now, which I'm happy because y'all know how I feel about Cecil and Simone. I like them together. So they then start talking about Dr. G and him getting married, pretty much saying like, girl, after Toy ends up saying after quiet, he want to get married. And you got Eugene being like, yeah, I'd have been scared straight. And they were like, Simone was like, well, you know, sometimes people can grow and find who they really need to be. And then we move on to the next scene. So we cut back to the vault and pretty much at the vault, we see a conversation between Heavenly, Phaedra and Jackie. And they're basically asking like, oh girl, is Quad gonna be here? We haven't had, a, like we haven't seen her and we haven't really talked to her. We found out that Quad pretty much been like radio silent on most of the girls. So they're kind of like, yeah. But we find out that um, Heavenly thinks it's because Quad got her feelings hurt at the reunion and she just sensitive. And Heavenly is like, I'm not in the business of kissing her ass and I'm not gonna do it. I got too much going on in my life to be like patting your ego. But I understand Kwai being upset with Heavenly. We know last season, Heavenly basically said that like the rumor that was going around is that Kwai was sleeping with a married man. And I think like saying, I think it was like he was a con the guy was supposed to be like a contractor or something. And like he was doing renovations at her home. I think that was the story. But I do remember her saying she slept with a married man. And you know, that pissed 
quad off. And that makes sense. Like, girl, don't don't try to tarnish my character that way. And so I guess quad just it hasn't, like, you know, been around that much. But Phaedra was like, no, I mean, I've been seeing she's been around the world. She's been traveling. She's been going to Dubai. She's been, not Dubai, I think it was Dubai, South Africa. She just, you know, she's been enjoying herself. And she was like, last time I spoke to her, she was flying to Chicago to go um, shop. So she's living her best life. And I said, that's how you do it. That's how you do it. And so um, the production ends up asking Heavenly, um, since Quad isn't here, what do you think she's doing? And I think Heavenly, and they showed Quad, she was like messing with her wigs at her house. But they showed um, Heavenly in the confessional being like, either she going to Nigeria to get her a man or she's sleeping with somebody, man. I said, see, Heavenly, you be saying slick stuff like that. And then you be like, stop it. And that's the thing, Heavenly is great for TV, but, like, Heavenly turns it on, and sometimes she turns it on too thick, and then she be mad or, like, looking crazy when people be cutting back at her. That's why I like Simone, because Simone stay cussing Heavenly out. Like, she be cussing Heavenly out. And Heavenly always be like, because Simone be matching Heavenly's energy when they get to arguing. And that's what I like. Like, don't let that lady get, don't let that lady bully you, bro. Don't do it. So then Heavenly was like, okay, well then, you know, how do you, I think she said they got into uh, Dr. G and Quad. And we find out that um, Phaedra has known Dr. G for 20 years. And the reason why he knows, why she knows Quad is because she knows Dr. G. And I think Heavenly ends up saying, well, you know, Quad told me y'all dated. And Phaedra kind of looked at her like, girl, dated? We did not date. And um, Heavenly says in her confessional, I don't believe a word Phaedra be saying because she got, she has issues with the truth. The truth ain't in the bitch. I said, Heavenly, God, dang. <laughs> dang. So pretty much, Pretty like so pretty much. Um, Phaedra ends up saying that she met Dr. G when he like first moved to Atlanta and they just have been friends ever since. It's like it's been like a 20 year friendship. The conversation ends up going like a little south because like you know, Heavenly was like, Well, you know, when we say people dated, it didn't really mean they had sex. And Phaedra was looking at her like, Girl, what? And you could tell that Phaedra and Heavenly were kind of like, like, what's the what's the word? Like, uh, it's not, it's like staring each other down, but kind of like looking at each other. And I think at that moment, Phaedra knew that like, oh, Heavenly, Heavenly gonna try me this season. Cause Heavenly was like, you're not gonna be on our show and not work <laughs> pretty much. And that's what it's given. Like, like Phaedra not gonna be on this show and not work. <laughs> so it switches back over to Simone and Cecil's house. And we finally see uh, Dr. G and um and sweet tea we find out she is 31 and uh you know the ladies like her they think she's really cool Cecil made a slick comment about you know greg leveled up some people were mad about that comment i wasn't that mad about it i don't know i just feel like in my opinion Quad and Gregory should have never been together. They both seem to be doing way better now that they're not together. Like you can tell, like the the joy in their in in their faces is way different. If I were to put like a side by side picture of Dr. G when um, Married to Medicine started to now, he looks healthier and happy. Same way with Quad. So to me, it just lets me know that that relationship was toxic for the both of them. For the both of them. So I'm like, you know what? They seem happy. So like I said, we meet Sweet Tea. We find out that she's 31. Um, she's from Arkansas. She was born in Arkansas. She lived in D.C. before she moved to Atlanta. So we find out that, because I think Simone was like, well, Greg, like, what was the reason why, like, you gave Sweet Tea a chance? And we find out that Sweet Tea slid into that man's DM talking about, I can give you what you need. I said, girl, what? <laughs> girl, I am not one of them girls. I am not the girl that will tell you to shoot your shot. I know I am not that girl. I am not that girl. So I was like, girl, couldn't have been me. Especially because I'm trying to figure out when did they start talking? Like, did you start talking to him when you were like in your 20s or when you were in your 30s? 
Like, have y'all only been together for a year? Like, did you meet when you were 30 or maybe when you were 28? But either way, I could not see myself being in my late to uh, like my late 30, no, my late 20s, early 30s and wanting to date and marry a man that's in his 50s. I, I know the girls do it. I know the girls do it, but it wouldn't be me. It, it would not be me. I just, it just, it wouldn't be me. <laughs> it just wouldn't be me. So she's like, yeah, I could give you, she's like, she said, she slid into the man's DMs and she pretty much was like, I could give you what you need. And so she posted that, like sent it to him in his DMs on IG with a flower and a baby emoji. So it's like, it's giving fan. Like you watch the show because you know, one of the main reasons why Gregory, um, Gregory and Quad broke up is because Quad didn't want to have kids and he wanted to have kids. And so her sending that with a baby emoji, I'm kind of like, girl, what? Girl, what? And like, it just, like I said, it couldn't be me. It couldn't, I just, uh, I, first of all, like I said, I'm not shooting my shot. I don't shoot my shot with these dudes. I just, I don't. That's just not, that's not my ministry. That's not my forte. That's not, that's not what I'm doing. But it worked out in her favor. So she happy, she in love, yada, yada, yada. And they get married. So we find out that they're going to have um, a hold down theme, like party, to like, you know, I don't know if they said it was like a bridal party or an engagement party, but they're having the party and everybody's excited. Now, some people feel some type of way that she on this show. I don't know if I feel that much of a type of way because it's not like they plucked them out of obscurity. It seems like all the men have still maintained their friendship with Dr. G. So him getting married and their wives being involved in it is pretty common. And them, and I don't, like, you know, they ain't got no reason to hate the girl. So, I, you know, we move on. We move on. We then get this really sweet scene with Alora and Dr. Heavenly. We know Alora goes to FAMU, where Grace goes, you know, um, Gar I could say Garcelle. <laughs> Too many Gs. Where Giselle's daughter goes. You know, Alora is such a pretty girl. She is such a pretty girl. I didn't like none of them prom dresses. I did not like, not one single prom. They were all ugly to me, but she's so pretty. You know, Heavenly's having a hard time, like, you know, grappling with the fact that her daughter is about to be at FAMU. But like I said about Grace, I hope Alora's having a fun, safe time while she's in college. You know, Heavenly's worried that she gonna get down there and fall in love and move the same way she did with Dr. Daddy. But you know, let the girl live. Let her live. Let her live. So let's get on to this hoedown. So the hoedown, y'all. So the hoedown is being, um, you know, taking place at Sweet Tea and G Dr. Greg's house. I'm going to call him Dr. Greg because if I call him G, I'm going to think of me as husband. <laughs> so I'm going to call him Greg. Uh, is it Greg or Gregory? Lord, my Lord. We're just going to call that man Dr. G until I can get these names together. But we're, we find out that they're having the, the whole down party. I think it's like a bridal party or, I don't know, or an engagement party. Either way, they're having a party at the house. You know, the Shade Fest was shading when Sweet Tea um, released her um, house tour because the house that they're in is the house that Quad and G was in, Dr. Um, Dr. G was in together. And, you know... Sweet Tea was being shady. I think she made a comment about, you know, exercising the demons out of the house and all of this stuff. And, you know, the people caught the shade. My thing is, I didn't understand people saying that, like, oh, I would make him move. We would have to move. Girl, in this economy, that house is probably paid off for. I would stay in the house. That's one less bill we got to worry about. I don't care if Quad used to stay there. I would have stayed there. Now, production did set Sweet Tea up because I'm like, why would y'all do this to this girl? Especially when there's not really any, like, huge modifications that have been done to the house. It it looks, it's like, what was the point of doing this? It would be different if there were modifications to the house, but they're not. Like, it looks exactly the same. But, you know, she has it set up. Honestly, it gave unfortunately sweet tea being in her her third her early 30s and all of these women being in their like 40s and 50s 
It's like you, the level difference to parties, like girl, this gave very much like not a, it didn't give like a TV party. You know what I mean? This gave like my friends are coming over to my house and we having a cute little kickback kind of vibes kind of thing. Like you're on TV. Like y'all should have put in work. Like, you should have told Greg to give you more money than that. Y'all should have had like an actual animatronic bull outside in y'all backyard. You know, like it should have been like a barbecue type thing. It didn't seem like it was cold outside. So like, yeah, the bull in the backyard. I would have had picnics. And like, you got to go hard now. You're on TV now, especially when, and I don't want to compare her, but I'm going to just make the comparison. When Quad throws parties, she throws parties. And even when the other ladies throw parties, they throw parties. Like you got to, you got to come with it. But the thing is, is like, she don't have the money that they have. Like Greg does, but she doesn't. Cause like, she's the youngest. She's the youngest. So like, of course she ain't, she don't like, unless she came from wealth and, she, and clearly she didn't. Cause she ends up telling us like she was born in Arkansas and the town that she's from in Arkansas only, I think she said doesn't have stoplights. So she is from like the backwoods of Arkansas, you know, like, like in the, in bum, you know, I'm about to, I'm about to cuss them out. I'm trying to cut down on that. In the middle of nowhere, you know what I mean? So, but I was just like, yeah, girl, this, this ain't, this ain't live up to what you thought it was going to be. It's giving, you know, house party with my girls, which is nothing wrong with that, but not for TV. But as everyone's, um, you know, they're waiting for everyone to get there. She's talking about how she's kind of nervous about the girls coming. She just really wants them to, she really wants them to like her. Um, because she knows how important, like, you know, Greg's friendships with the men are. That she's hoping that she doesn't have any issues with the ladies. And Greg is telling her not to worry about it. Like, you know, the girls gonna like you. Like, they gonna like you. So let's have a good time. So, we see everybody getting ready for the hoedown. Uh, we see a FaceTime call between Jackie and um, Heavenly, where Heavenly don't understand why Letitia, uh, a.k.a. Sweet Tea, is calling this a hoedown and it's supposed to be her engagement party. And Jackie's kind of like, well, you know she's from Texas, that's probably why. And they're like, okay. So, we end up seeing my girl, um, what's it called? What's it called? Was it my girl? What happened, y'all? Oh, everyone's pulling up to the house. We end up seeing Simone and Toya and, you know, Cecil and Eugene in the car. And Toya's talking about how she happy she moved away from here, girl. We happy this is a season you not moving. Because my God today, girl, y'all was like nomads. Just <laughs> every season we moving somewhere new. So we glad y'all found stability. And so um, they're talking about Heavenly and, you know, going to Quad's house as well. Because everyone's kind of like, it's kind of weird going to Quad's house. Um, and pretty much uh, Toya's like, you know, her and Heavenly are in a good place. She actually, you know, I appreciate her actually trying to hold fast to not talking about her on the internet. But y'all know that quickly changed because, you know, Heavenly just did an interview on her, not an interview, but a, um, a recap of the show with um carlos king and she was art she was throwing shots she was throwing shots at sweet tea she was throwing shots at toya she threw some shots at um a little shot at quad so eh, it didn't last it it, it it didn't last it didn't last but simone is just like the only thing i care about when it comes to heavenly is her mouth like you don't never know what's about to come out of it and most of the time it's bs so they pull up to the house. Everyone's hugging. We end up meeting uh, Sweet Tea's sister. I think she said her name is Kanisha. So Kanisha and Letitia. She says they're not fraternal twins, even though they look exactly alike. But I was watching Ashley Shy Miller's um, review, and she like read the definition. So I guess if you're are if you're fraternal twins. That means that like two eggs were fertilized by the same sperm. Whereas I think if you're identical twins, it's the same egg, but it's split later on. I, I think that's what it is. 
Um, but they look the same. They look the, they look the same. We also end up seeing Heavenly bring a new doctor, Dr. Allison. I think she's also a dentist. And I think they said her husband was a surgeon. And um, Toya was like, oh, my God, it's been a while since I've seen you. So I guess Toya knows who Allison is. Like, they met in New York. And um, she was like, oh, did you just come down here for the party? And she was like, no, we moved to Atlanta. So then Toya was like, so are you going to work with Dr. Heavenly? And Allison said no with such the quickness. I said no. She was like, I prefer to keep my friendships friendships and my work my work. And I said, girl, that's smart. That's extremely smart. So I, 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 I like that. I like that. Allison is very pretty. She's a very pretty lady. So I am interested to see, like, what kind of um, – her vibe is, is being a friend of, I don't remember them ever really, well, no, we've had, had some friends of, but they never stick. So I wonder if Dr. Allison is going to stick. And if so, how long will it be till Heavenly piss her off? <laughs> how long will it be? So now that everyone is there at the party, we see the men go out on the porch and they're talking. They're all congratulating him that he's a Dr. G, that he's about to get married. They're all happy for him. And they all were like, they can tell that he's happier with sweet tea. So they're just like, you know, it seems like she's the right one for you. So the other ladies are sitting down on the couch and they're just talking. And I think Heavenly asked sweet tea, like, what do you like about being engaged to Dr. Gregory and homegirl was like the access to the money. And I don't know if she meant that like literally or if she was just like trying to be funny. Like obviously she likes the access to the money cause he is well established in his career and he got money. But I'm just kind of like, like did she mean that the way, like, I don't know. I'm trying to figure out, did she mean it that way? I didn't take that much offense to it, but everybody was looking at her like, girl, what? That's something you say to yourself. You don't say it out loud, sis. You don't say it out loud. <laughs> you don't say it out loud. So uh, they're all just looking at her. Heavenly in her confessional was like, Quad was a gold digger. I said, girl, she going to be mad at you for saying that too. But she said, Heavenly's like, now, Choir was a gold digger. Sweetie, I think she digging for copper. She don't even know what gold is. I said, dang. <laughs> and I guess, I think this whole, well, we'll talk about that at the end. I'm going to talk about it at the end. But everyone's just looking at her. So then Heavenly asked her, she was like, oh, and even Phaedra said in her confessional, my gold digging meter is in full alert. So then Heavenly asked her, like, have you ever been called a gold digger? And everyone's kind of looking at her. And she was like, no, not necessarily. And then you had Toya and Jackie looking at her. And Toya was like, well, does that mean you've been called a gold digger or not? And even Simone Head was kind of tilt looking at her and Phaedra's too. And she was like, no. And so Jackie and Toya was like, well, then say no. You've never been called a gold digger, girl. What? <laughs> what? So... They then start talking about quad and they were just kind of like, you know, we know this is kind of new for you. Like, you know, we all do have a relationship with your um, soon to be husband's um, ex. She was like, I know I haven't really spoken to her. Toya's like, yeah, we ain't really spoken, which is not a big like, oh, my shocker or something like that. Um, and I was wondering if she's okay. You know, I heard she got a DUI and she asked Phaedra. She was like, so are you representing her? Everybody's like a DUI. And then Toya's like, I don't deal in lies or fallacies. That was another dig towards Quad about the whole, like saying that, um, un that Toya and Eugene had Neela's house case to be robber implying that. So when um, Toya was like, I deal in facts, she's like, type in, Quir I think Quad's name is Quadrandria or something like that, Webb Lumsford or something, and you'll see the DUI. I said, ooh. <laughs> She said, it's public record. I said, my goodness, my goodness, ma'am. My goodness, my goodness. <laughs> so they're like, yeah, but then you have Sweet Tea. Because everyone's now is like, oh my gosh, she got a DUI. Someone needs to check up on her. You hear um, Sweet Tea be like, well, Quad's not here. And this is not about Quad. So can we move on? And I'm like, girl, they're always going to bring up Quad because you're on Quad. Like, this is Quad's show. Like, that's like anybody else exes coming on this show, we would always refer to their ex because the ladies have been here since season one. <laughs> like, yeah, girl, no, ma'am. Like, you're going to have to get used to that. 
So then uh, Sweet Tea decides to like thank um, Dr. Simone for referring her to a different doctor because I guess she deals with fibroids. Then Heavenly being unnecessarily like just st unnecessarily stirring the pot is like, well, Simone, why didn't you refer her to Jackie? And Simone is like, I referred her to a specialist. Then Heavenly took it a step further and be like, because you couldn't do it or because you don't like to do surgeries because Jackie is a surgeon. And Simone was like, I can do surgeries. And she started listing down all the surgeries she can do. I referred her because she's a specialist. And Doc Jackie is a general practitioner, like, you know, I guess a general OBGYN. And so, like I told y'all, Simone be matching Heavenly's energy because Simone got the yelling, Heavenly got the yelling, and they was just going back and forth. <laughs> and Simone was like, Heavenly, stop talking about things you don't understand. Stick to veneers. <laughs> So then Kanisha, which is Sweet T's twin, gets upset because um, Tisha, Letitia or Sweet T is trying to like explain why she didn't go to Dr. Jackie. But they were all, Simone and Heavenly was yelling so loud and so into their argument that they weren't paying attention to Sweet Tea. So Kanisha spoke up so we can tell she's the more aggressive twin and basically told them to shut up in her sister's house. And everyone kind of looking at her like, girl, who are you? Like little girl, check your tongue type of energy. But they calmed down, but they didn't, I didn't hear nobody apologize to her either. So I, they weren't sorry. So then Sweet Tea ends up saying that pretty much, you know, Gregory told me to go to Simone because she was like, that's like my sister. And Simone referred me to this other person that could help me. And normally when people tell you to go to a specialist, that means they're at the top of the top of what they do. And if that person mainly deals in fibroids, as great as Dr. Jackie is, I would want to go to somebody who specializes in it. That's all the cases you're seeing. You probably see things and can tell me how to fix it a lot quicker than Dr. Jackie can. But then Dr. Jackie was like, because Simone is going to do, say something very kind. And then Toya said, and that's what a friend would say, Pretty much. I don't know what it is about Heavily and Simone's situation. Like someone said on on Twitter, it seems like Heavily ain't never had a real friend. And that's why she's so guarded and so protective over Jackie. But it's like you make their situation work because you know Simone and Jackie are still working on getting back to where their friendship used to be and are making it better. But there was no, there was no need for Heavenly to say what she said. Just stirring the pot unnecessarily, unnecessarily. And then, you know, they all decide it's time to go. Um, Heavenly makes a joke when um, Phaedra's like, let's clear the air. And Heavenly is like, oh, so you gonna tell us you didn't sleep with Dr. Gregory? Like you slept with Dr. Gregory? And Phaedra's like, no girl, no. So everyone leaves. It's the next day. We see Jackie and um, Heavenly talking about the party. Heavenly said that food was nasty and Quad would have never done us that way. <laughs> and then we end up seeing, um, what's her name? Uh, Sweet Tea and Greg go to, uh, Gregory go to the courthouse to get their marriage license. We find out that they're going to get married in three weeks. And pretty much Sweet Tea says she didn't like the fact that everybody kept bringing up Quad. And I guess even the men were bringing up Quad. And, you know, Greg was like, you know, a lot of people told me when I was with Quad, we should have we should have never gotten together. It was toxic on both ends. He was like, but I'm with you and I'm happy. I feel at peace. I feel comfortable. And, you know, we, we moving forward. Uh, but Sweet Tea is talking about there's a new sheriff in town. Girl, this corny. It was corny. I don't know how Sweet Tea is going to fare. This might be, she might be a one season wonder, wonder because I don't think she's going to be able to handle the fans response to her because a lot of people feel like it's messed up that she's on this show and that the ladies are supporting her. A lot of people are mad at Toya and Simone, but if you watch Dr. Heavenly's channel and that review she did with Carlos King, she admitted, admitted that she helped Sweet Tea get on the show. So everybody had their hand in this pie. And I also think that's because Quad wasn't talking to any of the ladies. So it was kind of like, if you're not going to talk to us, why you on this show? But I saw a, um, I was on OMFG Reality TV's page and they posted a tweet 
from Sweet Tea that I was like, yeah, she might not be able to handle the fans. Um, and so it says, yes, I did slide in, in his DMs and now I'm his wife. My personality and my humbleness has opened up many doors. Never let anybody tell you that you can't because you absolutely can. And then it was like, Miss, um, what's his man? Is it Loose Fern? Loose Ford? Whatever Greg's last name is, Dr. Gregory's last name is. And then she said, hashtag blush, hashtag love, hashtag married to medicine, hashtag married to med, hashtag bravo, hashtag happy, hashtag Dr. G, hashtag wifey. I honestly don't know how she's about to fare by the end of the season. I low-key think the reunion, she gonna get eight alive. I it's just, I don't know. I don't, I don't know if she can handle these ladies. And more so it's the ladies, but more so the fans. Because reality TV is a beast. And if you really don't have the mental fortitude to, to be a part of it, to know when to tap out, it, it will eat you alive. And I don't know if this girl got it. Maybe maybe Kanisha, her sister, should have been <laughs> the one to be on this show. Because she seemed like she don't take nothing from nobody. But yeah, y'all, that is it. That is all. Remember to be bravely authentic and hop down in them comments below. Deuces. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,